Hey friends, welcome to Season That Ish. Today we are going to be making chicken fettuccine alfredo. Now this is a really basic recipe and we're going to be making our very own alfredo sauce just because I feel like this is something that everybody should know how to make and you like people really go in for this olive garden alfredo and I promise you it's not hard to make at all. So you want to add in some unsalted butter. You want to grate some garlic into that butter. Make sure you don't cut your fingers. And you really want to make sure that you don't brown your garlic too much. Just saute it to bring out a little bit of the flavor. Then you want to pour in your heavy cream and after that add in some black pepper. The exact measurements are going to be in the description box so y'all could check that out. I pour in some evaporated or canned milk which is not traditional. Also not traditional is chicken bouillon or poultry seasoning which I like to use anyway because it has more flavor than salt. I add in my Parmesan cheese and then I grab my whisk and I whisk all of those ingredients together until she starts to get a little thicker and thicker. And once it gets to this kind of consistency, you want to go ahead and pour that into a nice glass jar. You can keep that jar in the fridge for about five days or if you want to freeze it for later, it can keep for five to six months. Now, if you're going to freeze this, make sure you put it in a freezer safe bag or container. And next time you're making Alfredo sauce, you can just pop it out the freezer or pop it out the fridge and it will already be prepped with no funny ingredients, nothing like that. Just the basic ingredients that we use today. So if y'all have already seen some of my pasta videos, you know to drill, fill your pot up with some water. And once your water gets to boiling, you wanna salt your water. I had a whole thing about salting water in my last video. So make sure that you do it. I plop my fettuccine in and I am saving about a cup of that pasta water. That is golden. So while our pasta is boiling, I'm gonna get started on my boneless skinless chicken thighs by adding in some garlic powder and onion powder. You know we don't make nothing without adding some garlic powder on it anyway. So add in some oregano and I'm also going to add in a little bit of parsley. Now I've been noticing that this dry parsley does not have as much flavor as fresh parsley obviously. But if you can, please use the fresh parsley in the recipe and then you can use dry parsley just to add some green on top. I'm adding in a little bit of black pepper all over that. And the next thing that I'm going to do is throw in my poultry seasoning. I really love to use poultry seasoning in place of salt just because I feel like the salt, the salt just does not do enough for me. I need like a good seasoning or poultry salt. I add in a little bit of cayenne pepper and if you do not like spicy food, you don't have to add in the cayenne pepper at all but I added just enough so that the food could have a little spice to it to my liking. Now we're gonna get started frying up our chicken a few minutes on each side just because these are boneless and skinless so they're not gonna need as much time. I would say give it six to seven minutes on each side but it also depends on the size of your chicken. Now look at that, that looks so good. That looks so good. Let's pause for you to subscribe and like this video because it helps my little channel out a lot. But obviously, you know, with the amount of seasonings that we put on there, there's like absolutely no way that this is not gonna taste good. So once that's all cooked through, I go ahead and I remove it from the pan. Now, one thing that you can do and something that I actually often do is I will cook the pasta in the same pan that I cook the chicken in. And what that does, I mean, look at all the flavor that's left behind on the pan, right? And so the pasta is just going to soak up all of that flavor and it's going to go into your sauce and it's just, it's going to be a good time. It's going to be good. But typically what I'll do is I will remove the oil that's at the bottom of the pan because you don't want your food to be too greasy. Now we're just going to cut up our pieces of chicken. And look how juicy that piece looks. That is a perfectly cooked piece of chicken. You want to slice those up into whatever size you like. If you want them smaller than this, you can cut it in half lengthwise too. And we're going to go ahead and plop our pasta into the pan. Now you can tell that the pasta is a little bit stuck together and that's totally fine just because it's been sitting there while I was cutting my chicken. So all I'm going to do is add in a little bit of pasta water. The starchy pasta water is liquid gold because it adds flavor and helps thicken your sauce. Now this is not editing at all, but as soon as I plop that pasta water on there, it immediately loosened up. 
Next, I'd like to add in my chicken into the pasta itself. What I like to do actually is I like to put some of the pasta, um, some of the chicken in the pasta, and I also leave about half of it to put on top just for presentation purposes because it looks cute. Then we're gonna take our Alfredo sauce, our homemade baby, and pour that right onto the pasta. Now I promise you, like this tastes way better than the stuff that you get in the jar sometimes that stuff like the flavor is off and i can't put my finger on why like there's something that i really do not like about it I had to let y'all hear that audio so that you know it's real. <laughs> so I added my chicken on top, the rest of the chicken that I had set to the side, right on top of there. And of course, my favorite, I added some more parsley for decoration. And of course, I added some Parmesan on top of that. And boom, look at that. I actually have a recipe for mozzarella stuffed garlic knots. So go check that out on my channel. I hope y'all enjoy this. I hope you try it out and I will see you next time. Bye.